This brain surgery could revolutionize the way doctors treat severe substance abuse. It's already changed everything for 35-year-old Jared Buckhalter. Do you think this device saved your life? I, I, do, I believe it did. Two years ago, Jared was the first person in the U.S. ever to have electrodes implanted to stimulate his brain in the hopes of lessening his desire for drugs. A star-wide receiver in high school in a small town in Pennsylvania, he was being recruited to play in college. But when that didn't happen, his life took a turn. I felt that I'd let everybody down, and you know, that just really put me in a bad spot mentally. And... The only thing that I knew to use to cope with that was pain pills. For years, he spiraled downward. I had resolved to the fact that he was going to die. Uh, oh, we gosh. just knew, well, he was either he was going to crash a car or OD or something, but something was going to happen. You drove a lot of people away, right? Mm -hmm. Family, friends. A lot. Got to the point where I literally had nobody, you know. When his therapist suggested the experimental surgery, he was scared. But after meeting with Dr. Ali Razai, he agreed to be the very first. Razai implanted a kind of brain pacemaker in his chest to send electrical impulses to the reward center deep in his brain. Our goal is to increase your dopamine slowly using deep brain stimulation so that you don't need to seek drugs to chase after that dopamine. The electrodes also stimulate the frontal lobe, hoping to encourage better decision making. It has to be within a millimeter, right? Exactly. We watched in July as they operated on their third patient, James Fisher. They woke him to test the device. Oh, what are you feeling? Any change you're noticing overall for you? Uh, happier. So this is where you're living now? Yep. Four weeks later, we met James at his sober living house in Morgantown, the very same place Jared now works. I'm coming up on two years of uh, continuous sobriety. <laughs> <laughs> Both men say the surgery was the tool they needed to commit to recovery. It's like somebody covered you up with a warm blanket, you know, and just, just the feeling of everything's okay. I used to have a really hard time making decisions. You feel more clear now? Yeah. Has it changed you? So it has. In every aspect of my life, it has changed me for the better. Has it made I, it easier to stay sober? It's made it much easier. Both have strong family support. What has it been like for you? Like Christmas every day. That's, that was the way I described it. It was Christmas every day. Do you think what you've gone through actually shows that addiction is something in part physical, physiological? Sure, it is definitely a brain disease, and I think that this only proves that. He's proud that he's repaired relationships. I became a much better son, you know, brother, uncle, uh, friend. I think that I'm finally the person that, that all of them hoped I would be. It's still early. Dr. Razai says they're not advocating for this to be used on every patient who has substance use disorder, but for those with severe situations who've been battling this for years, it does hold potentially some promise. Dr. Razai plans to perform the surgery on a fourth person this fall, and then using all that data, ask the FDA if they can get approval for a larger controlled study.